Hello everyone, today we're going to go over a quick and easy tip to try and save a flash drive. Um, it may or may not work for you guys, but I highly suggest you try it before sending one of these things off for uh, repairs at another place. Oftentimes can cost, you know, two to four hundred dollars. Um, can be very expensive, but depending on the data that you have on this and whether it was backed up or not, it may be priceless. So. This one was unfortunately still plugged into a laptop when the laptop got set down a little bit hard and kinked our connection. As you would assume, the flash drive stopped working instantly. So this is again kind of what the original flash drive would have looked like. Um, nice plastic coated, you can see, perfectly straight. Um, however, this next one here, we've just stripped off the plastic coating using just a, a screwdriver and a razor blade, pop that open. What will be inside is what you see here. So now, for this tip to work, you're going to want your flash drive to still be in a pretty decent state like this. Um, it can be bent pretty crazily, but you want to make sure that there aren't any burn marks or other issues going on in the back of the chip here. You can see all of our connections are still pretty clean. Um, there's no bent wires, broken items. Um, if you start seeing damage back in these areas, um, or if you flip it over and check out the pin side of the board, you know, on these areas here, uh, you're looking at more of a substantial repair that we're not going to cover in this video. We're largely dealing with just simply the power input, which is going to occur at this end right over here. So a couple of things you're going to need to do this tip, and you know, basically anyone can do it. It's nothing complicated about it. You may need to find some of these tools though, because they're not commonly held in the average household. Uh, the most important one we'll start with is going to be a soldering iron. This is going to be for applying a little bit of heat, melting the solder, melting the connections that hold these boards together basically. Um, you'll want to find one with the smallest tip possible. Don't go out and buy an expensive one. This is a four dollar one. It worked just fine. Uh, wet sponge that's used for cleaning the tip of the solder and also for resting the soldering gun on if you don't have a stand for it. And lastly, you may need a little bit of solder. This is plain plumbing solder here. Um, if you're going to do any major electronic repairs, you're not going to want to use plumbing solder. Get the, uh, the good stuff. So, um, but for this application, it may be just enough. So, next we'll bring this in a little bit closer here. I'll adjust the focus. Bear with me for a second. All right, so a couple of things of how these typically work. Now, what usually happens in this type of event where you have a bent board, first off, do not bend this back. Um, you're more likely to cause the connection to fatigue, crack, or break, and then we're into a whole other world of trouble. So usually with a single bend like this, your four connections on the inside of the USB, this is what moves the data back and forth, also supplies a little bit of uh, one of the avenues for the power. Um, these guys right here are going to be more likely to crack in that process. Odds are if you were using this, these USBs get quite hot. It might have been just warm enough to be flexible and not have an issue. It's just bent. Um, so you'll want to try and leave this in this state as much as possible. Now if you have already bent it, straightened it out, and tried it and it didn't work, um, you're going to want to inspect these areas here very carefully to make sure that they still have connections. If you have a broken pin inside of this section, um, you're talking about a more extensive repair than we're going to attempt today. Ours is fairly simple. It deals with the power input and output of the chip. So how it's supplied, a USB typically runs on a 5 volt, um, a five volt input from your computer. So one of the ways it comes in is through the actual gold pins that we're looking at on the other side there. And the other way is actually through this entire housing is the, uh, the return for it or the, the common ground. Now, as you can see, when I soldered this, basically you're gonna wanna take that tip and push it right along these areas and try and melt down this solder and get this connection to rebridge. A lot of times what will happen is there'll be a crack here and the voltage cannot travel from the chip side to the outside face and complete the circuit. So if you get lucky, you'll apply enough heat. And again, the idea of soldering is you want to wait until your solder goes from a solid state like this. You'll see it'll turn a more shiny surface and it'll become liquid. Um, also keep in mind what gravity is going to do during this process. If you're holding the chip sideways kind of like this and you, you're applying heat on it, your solder is going to run off and drip off and then you're going to have to be finding more solder. A lot of times there is a lot of solder on these connections and you can just reheat the connection up and make it work again. So 
Lastly, um, I recommend what made this process a lot easier was it has an LED chip on it. Um, that way when you plug it in right away um, back into your laptop or your computer you can see if you're successful or not. Go ahead and try it three or four times, um, applying more solder, applying less solder. The one thing I will stress with it is you want to be careful not to apply too much solder that you're starting to impact areas around these connections. If you're getting solder up into this uh, portion of these pins um, around the other sides here, you're going to have issues. You're creating a dead short in the board. Um, so be very careful with it. You don't want to use, stay away from that plumbing solder if you, if you can. And if you have to use it, try and apply it on this side of the board. You can see there's less stuff to come in contact with. Anyways, hope this works for you. And we'll get those memories pulled off here. Stay tuned for our next wonderful little tip.